Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades. I'm Matt Connerton, and to my right is the battered, broken, and bruised Gary S. Hopper. How are you, Gary? What do you mean, battered like as in beaten, or battered as in like coating on um, like hot dog or something? Uh, like the coating on a hot dog, oh, Gary. Yeah. That's what I meant. That's true. Yes. That is a true statement. Yes, I know. It's very odd. but So sure. anyway, I just wanted to prove that you don't have to be drunk to do stupid stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? Because that's kind of, I'm Irish, so I always thought that I always just did stupid stuff because it was when I was drinking. Sure, sure. And uh, anyway, I went up with a, I met a, we go on an annual fishing trip up to Pittsburgh with a bunch of friends. And um, so this, this is my buddy. That's Sue. Hey, Sue. She ran back out. Oh. I think she's going to the ladies' room. Oh, okay. Or she saw that Phil guy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, uh, I I went up there. Those guys all go fishing, and I, I'm allergic to little buggers, so I don't even bother. You're allergic to fish? Yeah. I'm really allergic, allergic to everything. I, I knew Gary was strange, but I never heard of that. Before. Yeah. Me neither, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it makes my skin all itchy and stuff if I touch them. Wow. And uh, so so they're all go. these are all my friends, so they're all going fishing. Hey, so. Hello. And um, um, I just brought up, I brought my oh, uh, my um, on off road bike, uh, 225 mm -hmm. Yamaha. So it was uh, Sunday afternoon. I knew I had to get back for a committee of conference this week. So 1 o'clock Sunday, I decided to, you know, I looked up at the ramp. I said, I can do this. And I tried to drive up the ramp, to drive the bike up the ramp. And uh, I lost my footing as I was going up the ramp, and then I got to the top and just flew right over the edge of the the uh, side of the truck and, and the bike and landed on my, my ribs. I got multiple fractures, and uh, I went, my buddy uh, uh, Tommy took me down to the hospital up there, and they emailed the uh, Dartmouth, because they don't have a radiologist on, on call I mean, there all the time, they emailed Dartmouth, and Dartmouth says, oh, it's just a couple fractures, you know, so they gave me a prescription and sent me home. Then I, when I got home, I had, there was a message on the machine that says, get to an ER. We were wrong. It was like like seven ribs are broken or something like seven really? fractures or yeah. something. Wow. And so they were worried about internal injuries. Well, they also worry about punctured lungs. You yeah, get, you get stuff like that that can happen too. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, so I spent all Monday at the uh, ER in Concord. and I got my first dose of, uh, what is it? Oh, the fentanyl. 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 Yeah. You're still here. Yeah, I got. They gave me a dose of fentanyl to uh, so they could do the uh, CAT scan because I couldn't straighten out. I still can't lay down. And you can't sit down real well. Either. Jerry was no. on fentanyl. I was patches. watching you. It took you yeah. two and a half minutes. I, I timed you to yeah. sit in that chair. Just to sit in the chair. And he's on yeah. the edge of his seat. I am. I am literally <laughs> on the edge of my seat. And uh, but but anyway, so uh, I found out fentanyl. It was weird because I felt like really kind of woozy and stuff like that. And then they uh, it it tampered down the pain well enough so I could at least get the CAT scan done. Yeah. And then um, uh, within an hour, it's going, the, the, the medication's wearing off. So on Facebook, I called it the Chinese food of the drug industry, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's why they, Jerry had to uh, wear patches for that. Oh, after his fall? After his, uh, yeah, that sh that shattered pelvis was yeah. horrendous. Yeah. Physical therapy that was necessary just to get his, his leg was so weak. But at any rate, yeah, the, you, have to, you have to actually tape it on and then you have to change it every three days. And so it's a time release thing. They don't, yeah, it's not something, you can't just take it and it stays with you. Anyway, so that was my, my proof that... Because you're Irish, you don't have to be drunk to do stupid stuff. <laughs> Jane Cormier says, just knock it off. Just knock it off, Jane said. Don't, yes. Just don't do that but, to yourself anymore. Well, actually, yeah. what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to sue my buddy Tommy. Oh. That's what to do. No, yeah. well, look, he knows I'm a moron. He invites me up there. He should have had a padded uh, driveway, really. Right, yeah. right. You know, Gary's cushion. Coming, let's nice, the nice th <laughs> he would have landed softly and nothing would have happened. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So he's definitely liable for he, that. Absolutely. Yeah. Clearly. Definitely. Clearly. Clearly. Yes. <laughs> so, Tom, you're hearing it. 
Live. You're, you're hearing it live. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, our guests tonight are Jack Kimball and uh, Representative Sue DeLemus. And Who actually made it on the right day a this time. Yes. Return yes. Made it on the right day <laughs> yes. and everything. Yeah. It's a do-over. It is. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's a do-over. <laughs> um, here to talk about um, uh, what, what's the status with Jerry. Who wants to lead off on this? Well, Sue can lead off because there's been some recent things that have happened, and she knows best. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, Jerry's been moved from um, Henderson Detention Center in Henderson City, city of Henderson, Nevada, to um, it's a Southern No Nevada Southern Detention Center in Pahrump. Wait, wait! I just realized something. Jack, could you recap what's going on? Because right now people are tuning in. It might be the first time they don't even know who Jerry DeLemus is. Okay. So okay. we probably should start there. Okay, I, I will sit back for a minute then. Just re kind of recap. I'll tell the quick story. Okay. Um, uh, many of you listeners probably remember, uh, if you don't remember at all, little tidbits about the Bundy Ranch in Bunkerville uh, a little over two years ago. And uh, a fellow by the name of Cliven Bundy, uh, he, he put out the call. He's got a large family. They owned a ranch. He's a rancher, cattle rancher, and they've owned this. I mean, it's multi generational. They they've owned it since the mid 1800s. Um, and uh, the BLM, Bureau of Land Management, uh, through coercion, uh, it's it's very tyrannical stuff they're doing. But uh, in recent years, the last last 15, 20 years, have been uh, systematically eliminating the ranchers from that land. There used to be 52 of them. And they succeeded in getting rid of 51. Wow. And Cliven was the last man standing. Uh, he had done everything he could to fight these people in court. They were, what they would do is they'd restrict his grazing areas uh, one year and then restrict his water rights another. They, they would do everything they could to harass this guy and then try to buy his property. This is the same modus operandi that they pull. Um, he he was pays, paying grazing fees for a long time, which is what everyone was made to do when the BLM uh, showed up, and they kept raising the fees. So after a while, Cliven just said, you know what, um, all these fees are doing is buying out the other ranchers, and I'm not going to continue to pay them. Not only that, but but the federal government shouldn't own this land. That this and, and for those who don't know it, the federal government, per the Constitution, is not supposed to own more than 2% of the land mass in the United States of America. Okay, and, and that 2% should only be for forts, ports, military bases, for yes. the defense of the country. By the way, I'm going to stick two cents in here, Jack. Don't forget that he was more than willing to pay either his local county or right. uh, the state. I was, I was getting there. Okay. I was getting there. Sorry. <laughs> but so, as Sue says, he was, he was uh, more than willing to pay the county or the state. The county and the state both said, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not into collecting those fees and so on and so forth. Um, and, you know, uh, the word is that he was putting that money aside. But it doesn't matter. The point here is that um, they continued to harass him. They brought him to court. And when you, when you think about the process, you, you realize how the deck is stacked because what you have is a federal bureau charging you with whatever they're going to charge you with. A lot of these things are bogus, particularly with respect to Jerry. But, uh, and then you've got to go to a federal court. You're going to be heard by a federal judge. Okay, everything's, everything's controlled by the feds. And, of course, uh, you, you stand very little chance. And they've got unlimited money. So they got unlimited resources. Because it's you our don't. money. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the taxpayer money is paying for all of this. And, you know, so you can see how it can break the bank. Of any individual who has to hire an attorney or a couple of attorneys to fight this, this craziness. So basically what happened, he, he, uh, he knew he couldn't win there. And they then finally said to him, they gave him an ultimatum. You, you, you got to get your cattle off the land uh, or we're going we're gonna to come and, and, uh, and impound your cattle. Uh, he said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, you know, I'm not selling to you. So basically what they did, and I'm giving you the quick version, folks, but what they did was they went, the BLM, along with some hired hands, started rounding up his cattle. But they didn't just round them up. They were murdering them. They were shooting them. Wow. And they, were, they, they had mass graves where they were burying all the cattle they were killing. Wow. They tore up all of the water infrastructure that the Bundys had paid for and installed to, to, so that all the cattle that were grazing could Not have water. Not just cattle, but wildlife as well. Oh, wildlife, become, yep. you know, used to being able to drink. And they were doing this, actively doing this. And he, he, just, he, he just said, oh, my God. So, I mean, that's his entire asset base. That's his entire that's that's his life. life. 
livelihood. It's I mean, his he, life and his, his family feed life. the country. Generation. You know, he's, this is so the man just. I, I know he. He's. He's. A, I never met him, but I, I certainly know him very well through Jerry, and I do know he's a good and honorable man. And uh, with a great family. And so he put the word out on social media basically saying, I need help. Yeah. I need help. I need people to come and help me. And he was afraid that they were going to come right in and, and, and attack him as well. So, yeah. so basically the call went out and thousands of Americans responded. Uh, and Jerry was one of those thousands. And Jerry went out with, uh, you know, several other folks from this area. And uh, he went out there to, and did, you know, he didn't. He wasn't involved in the standoff. There was an infamous standoff that occurred between the ranchers, Americans that went to help, uh, uh, thousands of them, uh, and the BLM and other agents, spec ops yeah. guys that joined them. And uh, it, there's a video you can see on that, but then everyone can go can look it up. And um, it's it's a sight to behold. I was in tears watching this thing. It really gave me hope. But basically, the standoff happened where they found out where they were holding the cows and the cattle. And they came in force, they being the family, hundreds of cowboys, American flags flying, uh, <laughs> Gadsden flags flying, and hundreds of other uh, blue-blooded Americans that decided we're going to stand with you. And they knew they were risking their lives. They knew they were being told sure. that they were going to open fire on them if they attempted to come through the gate where the cows were. Not only did they go through the gate, they cut the chains and went through and they just defied them go ahead if you're going to shoot us shoot us and and they backed off yeah and uh they went through and they got the cattle and they brought it back so jerry stayed another you know couple of weeks to protect the family he felt that after he'd stayed a couple to three more weeks that uh they were probably going to be okay yeah and he came home yeah fast and, forward and two and years was, later there was never i want to add a couple little things about that there was never a time when anyone any of the patriots who were out there who were standing for the bundies prevented any law enforcement officials federal state or local municipal from coming in and serving any kind of a warrant or arresting any of the bundies if they s saw fit now i want to know why in the world if cliven bundy is such a bad guy and he was actually breaking the law was he why didn't he get arrested why wasn't he arrested then why didn't he go to jail to court yeah. Really, I mean, why why weren't they just able to go in and arrest him right. instead of all of this armed stuff with the BLM? It really makes no sense when you think about it. If he was guilty of something or if they suspected he was guilty of something, he should have been arrested, and he wasn't. Right. Well, they, so, made, they made it about the, the desert tortoise and, and the money that he supposedly owed. You guys know that if, if it, the IRS and others, if you get to a point where you owe a lot of money, you can't pay it or won't or whatever, you know, they'll come in and they'll pull a lien on your property. I mean, right. that, that's what they do. So if it was about the money, they could have done that and, and just left it the left lien there, and they could have liquidated stuff later if you, if you sold the property. But the desert tortoise situation, and I have more information that I found out about this recently, the way this worked was uh, Harry Reid, son, and Harry Reid had a sweetheart deal, Rory, Rory, Rory Reid. With the Chinese manufacturing company, made to, they were going to make. Uh, they went to China. Yep, and they were going to make uh, solar uh, panels on this land, and people thought it was abutting uh, the Bundy Ranch. I found out later it wasn't abutting. What happened was uh, they had all these desert tortoises in the area. They wanted to build this thing, so they needed to mitigate. So they thought, let's mitigate, take the de desert tortoises and put them on the Bundy and put, that's right, grazing because, area. Because yeah. the, the panels were going to heat the ground, the actual ground, <laughs> up yeah, too yeah. much and would kill off the tortoise. Okay. So the EPA was going to have well, you know, so, the environmentalists. But, but think nuts. of the beauty yeah. of this as far yeah. as they're concerned. Now we can mitigate and put this endangered tortoise. We'll put them all on the Bundy uh, grazing area. And then what we'll say is, well, you 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 can't graze there because the turtles right, are there. And that's right. exactly what they did, and uh, but they captured they captured 1,500 of them. It turns out they couldn't take care of them all. Uh, that it was becoming too expensive and problematic. You know what they did to all 1,500? Killed them. They killed them. Yeah. Did they? Did they, they killed actually, all 1,500? They did. So they did do it. Yep. Oh so my so God. The, the the point here, and again, why would they do that? <laughs> so much for endangered species, you know. So but the point here is that this is our government now. This is what's going on in our country, and we're actually starting to see it here. You got a big, you get, you got the feds now coming in trying to grab a big, large landmass here in New Hampshire. It's the stuff we've got to, we've got to they fight. They want to control the water and the. But anyway, nobody, nobody wasn't a shot fired. Everything, everything that that happened 
uh, dissipated. Nobody got hurt. There was, there was no assault. And there were no victims. Else, I do want to say something else, too. There, there, there's a uh, Washington Post put out the other day they had an article that they wrote about the ranchers. And um, actually, Jerry's name was mentioned in that article, so someone sent it to me. And oh, in the article, they mentioned the fact that, you know, the people that had gone there were uh, crazy people and, you know, just trying to paint uh, the, the patriots as crazy. Yeah, they caricature Well, they, they specifically in that article brought up that married couple who went later and assassinated the police in a restaurant. I don't know if you remember this, but there no. was there there was a couple that after the Bundy uh, ranch situation went to I don't even know where they went or where it occurred, but it's I Las know Las Vegas was it Las Vegas that area. They went in, and there were um, police officers having lunch or something in a local restaurant, sitting in a booth, and these guys went in and shot them, shot them. You know, r point right blank. there, point blank, sitting yeah. right there, killed them, and then they had, there was a chase, and they ended up being being killed themselves, the, the murderers. And Jerry said, "You know, if I had been there, I would have defended those police. I would have any right. because no, what, 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 when they were at the Bundy Ranch, and Jerry yeah. actually n met those people. Somebody brought to Jerry's attention that these people were in." in the camp encampment around the in bunkerville and so they went and actually met jerry and jerry was like you gotta go you got you're a felon get out right. get off the property you're only gonna and, make us look bad yeah well, don't let that. the door hit you in the fanny on the way yeah. out please leave as soon as possible and those people those two picked up and left because they were identified as uh, unstable, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. so they were made to leave the Bunkerville yeah. situation. And it was Jerry that made him leave. I think the yeah. key thing is is that Jerry did that, right. not somebody else. Jerry, he knew the people that he got to know the people that were in, at the ranch. He got to know them. Uh, these people were outside outsiders, outcasts. They actually were across this this, this river. He's the one that talked to them, and he just said, "You got to get out of here." You, you know, he he knew they were sketchy, yeah. uh, and he he let us know about this yeah. because he said, "You know, I don't want." Anything to come back at us. And sure in hell, didn't they go kill somebody? I mean, it was just so right. they used that, okay? Yeah. But uh, he is the one that threw them off the ranch. And it, this didn't huh. happen two weeks later. Yeah. Uh, so that's, but anyway, so here we are. Fast forward two years later. I get this frantic call from Sue about 12, 13 weeks ago. ago uh, and Jerry had met up with the FBI on a couple of occasions. I knew. He'd call me. He'd tell me. He'd, he had nothing to hide. Jerry hadn't done anything wrong this as far as he's house. concerned. Yeah, he met in the house. Uh, he invited them in, talked with them, and so on and so forth. And, of course, got a comfort level, which is what they look to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then what happened is he got a call one day to go to, to Dunkin' Donuts up in Rochester. Yeah, he did that. He did my show the night, the day before that. He's yeah. telling yeah. us. He yeah. went. He went twice, and they didn't show uh, because they, they supposedly the second time afraid for their safety. Really? Yeah. Well, that's you know that's <laughs> painting as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh absolutely. Right. Yeah. That's a, that's yeah. setting up right as well. Right, yeah. Phil yeah. Christiana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a few weeks later, they did what, and I knew they were going to do this. I, they because I knew that that day was going to be the day they were going to arrest them. Yeah. They wanted them to come alone. They didn't want anyone else around. Yeah. They didn't want me to come. And Jerry said, well, why? And he said, well, we don't want Sue to get too emotional. Emotional about what? What well, would I, obviously what would I get emotional <laughs> about if you're not going to arrest me and you're not going to take me mm -hmm. in? Right. You know, if they had just said to Jerry, we have a warrant for you, you know, please come. He would have gone, right, right? Without any problem, without any history, without, all the, drama, without all, all the drama. How many people did you say were were at your house that day? Oh my gosh! Well, Jerry said there were thirteen. There were more than that. There were more because saw. they had yeah. people stationed at every. We we live in a condominium, and there are four condominiums where we live. So they had three people stationed at the doors on our side, and then on the other side, I think they probably had another six stationed. It's then incredible. they had yeah, they had vehicles all over the place. It wow. was insane. Yeah. But imagine this, okay? You got Sue and her mom, who's who's very ill with Alzheimer's and then you got and Jerry in there and you got tactic these guys are all tacked out yeah they got it all on man and they got the, the and you know, know they, they love it oh absolutely <laughs> well, they've got the it. toys they want to play with them yeah yeah yep. so they come in they, they come in all tacked up and which is absolutely clown stuff as far as I'm concerned because <laughs> yeah. Jerry would like Sue said Jerry if they came to the door one of them 
and said, hey, Jerry, you know, we got a warrant for your arrest. And Jerry would have said, what are the charges? And they would have cuffed him, and he would have gone peacefully That's to right. whatever. There's right. no need. Yeah, but they also, the, the other thing is they know that. Yeah, they, they do, do know, know that. that. Oh, yeah. You know, they I, absolutely know that. There's no doubt. On, they're just putting on. It's a all show. a show. It's a yeah. show. It's yeah. a big show. It was like a big production. I, it was, I, 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 sorry to be garbling my words, but it was horrendous to, yeah. to see. And, I of wonder, course, I panicked. <clears throat> I wonder if anybody's looked into how much it cost the government. Just oh. to put on that right. Just to put on that show. It's probably tens of thousands of dollars mm, yep. yeah. just to put on a show yeah. when anybody that knew, knows anything about Jerry or the situation knows all they had to do was and walk been, up to the they house. They know Jerry. Yeah. They've been. Phil said he. They looked him up. They came to talk to us about some other situation, and they said, you know, we know who you are. We've we've seen you on Facebook. We see your posts. We see everything about you. We know who you are, and we're sitting at the at the dining table in my house. Yeah. Right. You know, no big deal. I brought this. Yeah, if they were really afraid, they never would have gone to your house. This was <laughs> right. Yeah. Why? Why would, why would they jeopardize <laughs> their own lives going to your house, where they're outnumbered and they're outflanked? If they were truly afraid in any way, shape, or form. They, yeah, it just was a ch total show. But yeah. I just wanted to. I brought this because this was this was a pin that I had made for Jerry. What is in it? The I can't, interim, I, my eyes are really it says badly. Jerry, for sure. It says Jerry DeLamus for constitutional sheriff. Right. And he ran for sheriff in Stratford County. That was 2014? Yeah, or? I think so, yeah. 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 And it, it, so this is the interim, you know. He's He goes out there. He comes back. Now, the FBI is fully aware of who he is. Right. You know, if he were if he were a danger, why? why it, and I'm not saying just Jerry either. All of the people who were involved with this that are now, now incarcerated and being kept as innocent detainees. They're detainees. Right. They want to free the guys in Gitmo? Well, guess what? We want to free the guys that are in incarcerated Nevada. now. Well, they're, they're only detainees. No. Yeah, and I think the key thing here, though, is, is that uh, you, you gotta, we got to talk about Oregon a little bit because Jerry, uh, he actually called the FBI and said, you know, during the Oregon st uh, standoff at the Mara Refuge, he called them up and said, yeah, I'm going to go out there. I, he, I, I, he wasn't yeah. in total agreement with what they did. And Je Jerry no, he thought, was not in agreement at all. He was against I, what they I did. I want to go out there and see if I can talk them out. Right. Yeah. Um, we got right. to back up what's happening in Oregon. So what happened in Oregon, you, f you already know that, that, well, if you want me to tell that story. So what so, happened was yeah, briefly, yeah. in Oregon, we had a situation with the Hammond family. The Hammond family bought their ranch in the mid-60s, about 1963. Again, nice family. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the husband and wife, there's two or three little ones, and then the father. And uh, again, they were trying to move them off the land they, through intimidation. They refused to sell. Uh, and of course, they're wondering what is, why are they doing this, right? And so, what happened was, and I'm, I'm just going to cut to the chase, that there were two incidents. One was there was this wildfire that that w w was was going on, was coming toward their ranch. So they asked permission to start a backfire well, the to wildfire stop was the wildfire. By the BLM. And well, we found out since that it was started by the BLM. Yeah. The original really? wildfire. We had two witnesses, and and they and they rent and they reported that, and they lot. wouldn't let them go and testify in court. Wow! But these guys, and that's going to come out. But what happened was they set the backfire. It saved not only their property, from what I understand, other properties as well, but it burned a little bit too much. So you know what they did? They charged them with arson mm -hmm. and domestic terrorism. There's the label right there. They then they then got permission to do another control burn on their property and burned it burned. You know, get 9,000 acres. It, it yeah. earned an extra 100 acres or something. And so they charge them again with arson and domestic terrorism. The, those poor people, all right? So what happens is they... Now, why do they want that guy's land? The, Hillary Clinton's, the Clinton Foundation, worked a sweetheart deal with a Russian company called Uranium One. Look it up. You won't believe this stuff. She had already promised that to this company <laughs> while she was Secretary of State. <laughs> okay, so they had to get him off. Why? How much? Wait, Uranium I'm rich under that land. Oh, yeah, okay. wait, 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 wait. Uh, now, the Clinton Foundation, as we know, over 9% of the money that they get goes to charity. 
Yes. Yes. Shall I phrase that? Oh, yes, yes. Really good. Over 9%. Wow. <laughs> so how much money did the Clinton Foundation mysteriously get from Russians? Do you know? I don't know. All I know is that I spent a lot of time, a lot more than Sue even knows, because it made no sense to me. And I followed the money. And there was a money trail every which way on both of these situations. So they put the, they put the uh, older father, the grandfather, if you will, in prison for four months. And then they took the younger guy, who was his son, in prison for a year. These guys didn't even fight it. Okay, they should have tooth and nail, but they didn't. Yeah. And so what happened was they just felt, we'll serve our time, we'll get the heck out, and that will be the end of it. Really? No. So they they got out. They got out. And then a new judge comes in, female judge, all right? She, I'm sure she got ordered to do this. She looks at the case again and says, oh, domestic terrorism, minimum five-year sentence. So she actually goes and has them yeah. brought back in, Resentence. and the two of them are back in prison now. Yeah. The, this guy's and a the death sentence the for the And the father, old guy. yeah, oh, he's yeah. in his 70s. He's going to die in late 70s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's not going to get out of there. Yeah. And so they're tearing these families up, and again, they, they take the breadwinners. They always do it. They take the men, and they do it because they know that usually they're the breadwinners, and the families will have no financial wherewithal right. to fight this. And so eventually they'll get the ranch. That was the thing that really got me interested in this story uh, was the Hammonds and their situation. And, you know, they, they serve their time. And they get out, and then another judge can just come along and say, "No, we think you need to go back. We don't think we're done with you." I was horrified. I had no idea that that even. Happened. I never knew you could do that. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. almost seems like double jeopardy to me. It does, it does, like it does seem like double jeopardy. It's probably yeah. it probably shouldn't have been done, but they figure out a way to just do whatever the hell yep. they want. Yep. Because as I've said before, and as I will continue to say, and as John Burt that I I told this to John, he's like, "Can I use it?" I'm like, "Yeah, please do." Everyone needs to start saying it. The federal government is not out of control. They are fully in control, and they are in control of us. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who are out of control, and we damn well better wake up. Yeah. Wake up. I agree with that. Under, yep, I agree we with are, that. We, yep. are, we are out of control, and they are in full control. Look at where my husband is right now. They had He went from Stratford County uh, Correctional Facility to... Um, uh, 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 New, New York uh, in Brooklyn where that's a holding place then they go from and that's ICE too and then from there he went to uh, Oklahoma City there were two places in Oklahoma he was moved into so there's another that's four places then he went I mean by the time wow. he reached Henderson he'd been sort of bopping around in probably six or seven different holding facilities and prisons yeah and, and, you know, trying to find him was really not an easy thing. You wow. know, thank goodness he had a, his court-appointed lawyer out west was helping me yeah. to find him. And then we had other lawyers here in New Hampshire, one that Jack uh, mm -hmm. uh, got for us that also was helping us, you know, keep track of where he was. And so Jerry has been in Henderson um, Detention Center in the city of Henderson in Nevada, which is, uh, I think it's sort of a burg of... Um, Las Vegas and so it's pretty much close to downtown and today no yesterday I got a call from Jerry in the morning and I'm like hi hi honey how you doing you know we talk and they have limited phone calls so we have yeah. 15 minutes to talk and then it gets cut off and then he called me later on the in the day in the afternoon and he's like well I'm in Pahrump I'm like what they had taken him Bing, bang, boom. They don't tell anybody anything, wow. of course, because you're subhuman. Yeah. You're not in, you have no really brain and you have no right scary. to know what's happening in your life. Well, no. They don't even tell you what time of day no, it is. No, that's not why. It's because they know that you are such a scary person, Sue. So that you would <laughs> oh, organize for God's a breakout. sake, yeah. Your yeah. Right. is going to be a jelly. Speaking of that, not, <laughs> someone, Unbelievable, not the breakout. Though, really. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing that, that upsets all of us, not only the fact that the, Jerry's innocent, and Sue said it very well, all the others are too. Yep. They, they've done nothing wrong. They've exercised their rights, the First yep. Amendment rights, Second Amendment rights. Uh, they have done nothing. In fact, the only tyranny that's been, and the only terrorism that's been inflicted has and been the, only the other threats. way. the right. government to us, all right? The, yeah. the government, the BLM they were aiming openly rifles. threatened they were aiming and rifles said at that us. They, their verbiage was, we will yep. shoot anyone who advances. Yep, you can hear them. You can hear it on the they speakers. They threatened. Yeah. Now, think about this. 
Every one of these guys, including Jerry, that's been arrested, have been treated horribly, all right? So much for innocent until proven guilty. Wait a minute. But Strafford was very, very nice. Very, oh, so, very uh, yeah. nice Strafford, to him. Yeah, and Strafford Perump County Jail was. actually kind of being nice, too. But, so. but still, okay, uh, he was in isolation a while, and you can argue pros and cons on that. But the bottom line is he's, he's done nothing. He's innocent. And that kind of treatment, as far as I'm concerned, is, is certainly not worthy of somebody like Jerry, six years in the United States Marine Corps, yeah. already served his country with distinction. Uh, ran for sheriff, ran for sheriff. And he ran mayor. for sheriff and, and so forth. I mean, this is a joke. And all it's, and we all know what it is. It's intimidation, pure and simply. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to say, if you do this, this is what's going to happen to yeah. you. Well, this it's, is what it, happens when you exercise your constitutional rights. You think you have constitutional rights? You don't. No. Not really. You're supposed okay. to have a right to a fair and speedy trial. But That's where I was know. going with this. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you, it's, this just occurred to me. It's like this. You're with your, your wife and, and kids, and a gang starts walking towards you, and they mean you harm. You've got a revolver with six shots. There's 30 of them. You know what you do? You take out the guy... The head guy. The head guy. The guy with a big voice who's coming at you and, and says, okay, I only got six shots. You're going first. Guess what happens? They all back off. Jerry was one of the few people that not only was willing to participate in trying to uh, defend the Bundys, but also was vocal about it. So I think that's what the – because we all know that there's other people from New Hampshire that went. And although the FBI is tormenting them by – you know, circling their houses with helicopters and doing all kinds of other BS, they're still not arresting them. So if it was just because Jerry went out there, then they would all be arrested for the same thing. Well, what they're saying, they're, the government has this great thing called conspiracy now, and it's apparently they can use it, it, it carte blanche almost. Yeah. And so they're claiming that there was this great conspiracy. You want to know what happened? I'll tell you exactly what happened, and I'll, I don't know if I'll go to court with this or, or if I'll ever be asked to, to tell them what happened that, that right. when, when it happened, but Jerry saw something was wrong. He was on Drudge or on his computer, He's always looking to see the news. So he hears about the Bundy thing. He's reading it, he's looking at it. A little while later, this is in the morning, he turns to me and he goes, wow, I need to talk to this guy. He c and I'm good at doing stuff. And he looked at me and he goes, honey, can you get me the phone number for this guy, Bundy? I said, I'll try. So I went on, and sure enough, I found his home phone number. It was easy to do. I found, found his home phone number. Yeah. So we called him up uh, at his house, Cliven. And Jerry said, hi, Cliven. And they talked for a little while, and I heard Jerry say, well, what can I do for you? What can I do to help you? Which is exactly who Jerry is. What right. can I do to help you? Right. It's exactly the words that came out of his mouth. And I'm thinking to myself, I think he's, I bet you he's going to maybe go out there if Cliven says he needs him. And that's what Cliven said. He said, we need, we need people. Yeah. Will you come and be with us? And that was it. Conspiracy by, you know what, and I'm not going to swear on the well, radio, the but, you know, I mean, that's not, if that's conspiracy, what the hell? But right. ge generally, though, and, and I, I don't think this is right, but I know that law enforcement typically, in any situation, it seems like they try to charge somebody. They overcharge on, yeah, on with purpose. Everything, everything they can possibly come yep. up with. Hoping that something will stick. Right, exactly. There yeah. was absolutely, positively, completely zero like that's, like conspiracy. That's, zero conspiracy yeah. at all. No, yeah. The that morning he talked to Cliven. Then he said, "Well, I gotta go," and then he was gone. Well, yeah. it was it was like when when I went to court uh, the second time because I didn't even know about the first one till after it was over. But the second time in New Hampshire, and they were saying, you know, because they had charged him with I think threatening and a threat was the first charge like threatening or something, and they he then wasn't they, even there. I, I get he the, never. Shh, just let me finish. <laughs> they charged him. I think they charged him with threatening, but the def the prosecuting attorney admitted that Jerry didn't show up till a day or so after. Yeah. Right. There's a slew of charges on the original uh, charge list that 
don't apply to them. Yeah. And it just goes to show you how haphazard this all was. Yeah. I'm betting if you looked at the charges of each and every one of the other guys, they're probably pretty similar. I, I wouldn't imagine they would be much different. But Jerry wasn't. They, the, the charges, some of them were on there, were, were under the presumption that he was at the standoff. He was, he was there. not there. Right, right. Uh, you know. I was going to say, too, like, that's what they did to the Hammonds, the overcharging. You know, you think about they charged them with domestic terrorism. Well, obviously, they're not domestic terrorists. I mean, they're really not even arsonists. Yeah, but they were but in prison for five years. Exactly. Because yeah. it wasn't because it was an option. Cause, right. Because they realized years ago that a terrorist could use, because especially if you go to California and some of the drier places, it would be very logical to, to for uh, an al-Qaeda member or something to... Or ISIS to just torch, set a fire, yeah. set fire. So I can see why you would have that as a law, right? But it obviously doesn't. It it it's insane. Well, that it left the door open for misuse, right? Well, and that's abuse. the problem. And we that's what they're using the it for. They're abusing what it's meant to, to to be used for, and they're doing it against the good guys. I mean, right. they're doing it against the people that absolutely would stand and fight. The very people that would be domestic terrorists. Right. And they're, they're throwing them in jail. I mean, yeah. this is insanity. We've got we're a. We're uh, upside down. We got a call coming in. We'll grab this. Hi, welcome to Rock Paper Hand Grenades. Who's on the line? This is Jane Cormier. Well, hello, Jane. How Jane. Are you? Hi, Jane. Jane. J Jane. Whatever you. How are you, Matt? Good. Doing well, Jane. Thank you. I don't have any uh, rib issues. Don't. So make, I'm doing great. I know. <laughs> don't I'm make. Actually, calling in to tell Red Hopper to stay off any more bikes. Yeah, you know he's right. not going to listen. Yeah. You need to keep whatever ribs you have. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking he needs to stay off of anything like that, even horses. Right. Yeah. Hey, yeah, but just don't make me laugh, all right? <laughs> I'm sure crossing and laughing are out of the question. Right. So that's all you called in was to pick on me? No, I actually wanted to tell you that I'm praying for you, and I hope you get better real soon. Thank you, hon. You're awesome. You're welcome. She is awesome. She is awesome. awesome. You know, are awesome. Janie, <laughs> why don't you run for Senate now again? I already asked her. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Well, oh. if, 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 I, if there was any way that I could pull it off, I would do so. But at this point, um, it's just not. She there's just, no way I can do it. I can't mm -hmm. change my life trajectory right now. To she just took a new job. Senate. But, you know, I'm not going anywhere in New Hampshire. So That's good. And, you, and you're so fabulous. I'm her number one fan. I don't know if you all know oh, that. I, know I that. can't tell. I, <laughs> I am Jane Cormier's number one fan. There's Very nothing nice. that woman. Oh, I don't know. I think there are other people that would do. compete. She is phenomenal. There are other people that would compete with you. Yeah, that pretty much. Fun. Oh, I don't know. Hey, so Jane. So, <laughs> so Jane, I was reading a quote from Harry Truman. It says if you get rich in politics, the only the yeah, only people that right? yeah the only people that get rich in politics are crooks. But what bothers me is I didn't read that until after I was already in politics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we have to take care of that for you by not paying you. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, there that's a go. guarantee. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, young lady. Thanks for the All call. Right, you guys call. All, All right, right, thanks, dear. Thank Hi, you, Jane. Jane. See you later, Jane. She's Bye. a sweetheart. I love her. What a talent. Yeah. That woman, there's nothing well, she's she saying, can't do. Uh, that's the first one of the first calls I made. Was yeah, she saying. can't, there's nothing she can't so, do. So, and she always says yes, you know, come to the fundraiser. She did the na the national anthem and also sang, uh, uh, she sang God Bless America with Sue. She made her Sue living as a as an opera singer. She oh, yeah. lived, She was yeah. in Vienna. She yeah. was, she's. Oh, you know what's funny? Is all that over. The, the first world. time I had her on the show was years ago. And, um, and it was, I forget, I was right to life or something. I forget what the bills were that we were talking about. And just before she comes on the show, she goes, you're not going to ask me to sing, are you? <laughs> and I go, why the hell would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> now you're in trouble, Why well, didn't I didn't know. Because yeah. well, I'm know. sure you're still listening. But I had, she also sang a song. I had no idea that she, she sang, yeah. so I was yeah. just like kind of baffled by the... She teaches. Because nobody teaches else singing. ever asked me, you're not going to ask me to sing when they she come on. She rehabilitates Jack didn't say that when people. he came on. I, well, I'm sorry. See? Yeah, usually she, people say, you're not going to sing, are you, Gary? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's <laughs> well, usually the question. We'd talk right over that. But, but no, she also sang a song uh, named Chester. Mm -hmm. was a Revolutionary War song. That's right. I never had heard it before, so as soon as she told me that was what she wanted to do, I looked it up and I listened to it a few times the words are really mm -hmm. apropos and so she did that with uh catherine and chris right yeah yeah so the three of them did do you videotape nice that right and we have it it's a uh, granite rock 
was there. You got a it's video. We the whole can thing get it. We can. Yeah, I don't know. I what, think the whole thing made it to. Oh, uh, the whole thing was on, on on video. Oh and yeah, I haven't oh seen yeah. It. The, the the viewers don't know that. We, uh, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, uh, how many weeks ago was that? Three, two weeks no, ago. No, it was just it was a week ago. No, a week, it wasn't. It was, it was it the fourteenth. What's today? Twenty uh, fifth. Yeah, it's fourteenth. Yes, yeah, it's almost two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah, almost two. Almost two weeks ago, they had a, a uh, fundraiser. Fundraiser for Jerry. Mm -hmm. yep. It was very nice. I got there late because because of, of you know, stuff, but so I didn't hear or see sing the national anthem. But uh, it was really really nice. How did the, and how did that go? It was. It went really well. Thank you, Jack. Well, I, I say this, you know, I and I tell Sue this, and I tell Jerry this because he does a lot of thanking of me, and I just say, hey, look, you know, I, 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 there's some selfishness in this. If not for the, but for the grace of God, there go any of us. And my my feeling is simply this. And Jerry's my dear friend, and I would do this anyway. But I want I want to know personally that if this happens to me. That people aren't just going to move on, right? And I said that when I spoke the other day. I said, you know, I'm, I can't move on yeah. until he's free, yeah. and and we all should not be moving on with these things going on until he's free. In fact, we should be raising holy hell yeah. and shining a, a very a bright light on this, which is another thing I'm working on, and, and we're going to shine a big light on this. You know, right now the elections. Are, Taking up all the oxygen in the room, and right. yeah. you know it's very hard for anything to squeeze in there and get any attention. But we're going to do that. But um, that's that's the other reason I'm doing this because all too often when something like this happens, uh, most people just go, "Oh, that's awful. That's terrible. Send a check," and then they just go they go right. right back to what it is they were doing, and they feel badly. But that's the end of it. And I mean, we we cannot do that. And my fear is still the majority of us will and so I'm just trying to not let this die at all I'm gonna yeah. keep going and keep going and keep going so and I've got my hands full I can't uh, I can do very little mm. on my own I you know I, even today I was hoping to be able to go over to storage and move some stuff around and I I need a, I need a man <laughs> you know I mean I've got a girlfriend who's helping me who is just really so wonderful and she's been such a monstrous help. I mean, it's just great. But every now and then, you need a man. You know, I've got some stuff I got to move around. I don't, you know, uh, who do I call? The freaking so. feminists are going to hate you. Yeah, they I are. Am, listen, no, I tell you gonna, what, you're I gonna am get not phone a calls now. I am. I used to be a feminist, but not anymore. And that's not recent. I have. It's been a long time that I've actually woken up and matured. Well, I think that's. A, I think it depends. Yeah. I I consider myself a feminist in a way. Okay. You don't walk like one. No, I don't. I didn't say I was transgender. Oh, okay. I said I was. <laughs> in that, um, I believe women, if they're doing the same job as I am, they should get paid equally. Yeah. Okay. That's but I, it. But I that uh, to me that's the extent of it, because I also believe that God created us differently for different purposes. I don't think women should be in combat. Okay, they're 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 the human beings that God created to actually reproduce. Putting them in combat is absolutely is absolutely insane. You know, the, the, it's God made men to protect women. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And that's putting what they're them gonna in, do on the battlefield. Deliberately putting them in harm's way yeah. is only jeopardizing other people in that situation. It's it's foolish. It's it's feminism gone amok. Yeah. Um, feminism today, if 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 you're if feminism you, was part of the communist plot, I believe, and and go ahead with the agendas. But you know, seriously, feminism is one of the planks of of the communist manifesto, and it's a, it's been foisted on the women of of the United States and now spreads to the world. And I think it's a I think it's a terrible mistake that people think that men are supposed to be women and women are supposed to be men. We are not. We have our we have our places to be and there are things to do. And it's not that we're not equal, and it's not that women don't have the same worth as a man has. But we have different things that we can do. I do not have the upper body strength of a man, and I never will. Neither do and I And I anymore. was strong. <laughs> I, I used to, you know, arm wrestle and do all kinds of stuff, and I've been very physical my whole life. I mean, I'm oh, not a hurt. shrinking yeah. violet, <laughs> but I'm certainly not 
I am not a man, and a man is not a woman, and you can't make it yeah. be the other way around. But I think, too, um, I'm a prior, I'm prior Navy. Uh, we've come a long way with respect. I think there is a place for women in the military. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't it's, not like, it's not like they can't join and shouldn't be. And I'm, I'm totally for them being, you know, like on an aircraft carrier now, they have women on board. And on the bigger ships, women are sure. on board. Could they call one of them the love boat for a while? I, well, I, let's not go there. But, uh, <laughs> but I will tell you, uh, it's the same thing even when you get into uh, combat zones. You can still have women way back uh, in the right. field supply handling supplies i don't even mind there being uh, fighter pilots or, sure. or or pilots in general there's a lot of things that women do very well and they should do them and if they want to serve their country by god fine but i agree 100 percent with you yeah you put them on the battlefield and you got a whole mess to deal but with the thing that. is is feminism when it started in the 60s and 70s was absolutely legitimate but what it did it was hijacked by the the extreme feminists and if you look at Bill Clinton Bill Clinton is a good example of feminism gone amok in that he uh, took advantage of women basically you know you know uh, took advantage of the position he was in to take advantage of women and every time a, a woman stood up and said anything the feminist would attack the woman mm -hmm. and the reason is um, I ran into this uh, uh, years ago in the, uh, in the state, my own personal experience, was I, w I filed a bill of address to remove Wayne Vetter, who was the director of Fish and Game. And if you actually look it up, it's the only bill you will see that never was appointed to a committee. Wow. It never did anything except be laid on the table the following year. Wow. And then killed. And so anyway... And the reason I did that was he was taking, he was like making advances to the women that were working with him in the office. His friends were coming over and messing around and stuff like that. The women would call one another if they were alone with him. Wow. It was so bad. You know, one of the ladies would call up and say, hey, he's here alone with me. Can you, come, can you get back here as soon as you can? It was that bad. Wow. Okay, so now... Uh, the Speaker of the House at the time was really mad at me. Um, everybody was really mad at me because he was a Republican insider. He had somebody who had contributed to the party. Uh, I had everybody against me. So I called a national organization, a state national organization of women, and says, look, I'm, I'm, I think I was my second, beginning of my second year. I says, I'm a pretty new legislator. I'm in way over my head. I'm, I know I'm doing the right thing, mm -hmm. but it's still way over my head. I could use some help. Nope, they did not want to get involved. You know why? Because if they had got involved, their abortion bills would have been harmed because they were siding with somebody who was going against leadership. Mm -hmm. And at that point, leadership and the Republican leadership would uh, stand down on abortion bills. They'd say, vote your conscience. So they didn't want to piss off leadership because uh, a 12-year-old getting an abortion – uh, without their parents' permission, is far more important than how women are treated in the workplace. And therein lies the crux of the problem in this country, is that if you look through, almost everything is politicized. And now oh, yeah. it's 100 percent politicized, oh, yeah. particularly with this administration. I mean, there is nothing this man does at all uh, that isn't politically motivated, or at least ideologically motivated. And so, uh, you know, here we are going over that cliff. And I don't see anybody yanking us back. So, uh, you know, the, 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 the whole Trump issue exists because everyone's mad, but we'll see how that plays out. But, I mean, I'm not a, I was a Ted Cruz guy, not a Trump guy, but I will tell you this, the alternative is unacceptable to me. So, I mean, well, I, I think actually, you know, I'm, I'm with you. I was with yeah. Cruz also. Yeah. But I think one of the reasons Trump has so much appeal is he's not an ideologue. No, and, that's, and, and, and he can't be bought. Yeah. You know, he's, he's so I think people look at that and say, I don't that's why nothing sticks to him because people say, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. I, you know, he's willing to fight, and you should, you're seeing it now. They're not going to win this battle. In fact, you're going to see him, I think, his his ratings are going to continue to climb, well, and it's going to be exponential. Do you it's just hear what be. they did today? They came out yesterday and attacked him because he, he had mentioned that he looked like there, there was going to be a, uh, a bust on the housing market, and he was going to capitalize on it. Well, 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 let me finish, right? Yeah. So Elizabeth Warren comes out and attacks him oh. because he's a heartless SOB, right? Pocahontas. Well, guess what Pocahontas did? 
Pocahontas was flipping houses then too. She was buying. She was buying foreclosures. Yep. Yeah. And flipping she was, them. She was buying foreclosures and flipping them. Yep. So Pocahontas is. Uh, well, you can't, blame him. Yep, you can't blame him for, you know, engaging in capitalism. And I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm voting for Gary Johnson if he's the Libertarian nominee. Yeah. But you can't blame Trump for no, you know, being a businessman. That's all he's saying is when the market, you know, when the market's right, you buy. Right. And when it's you really wouldn't. high, you sell. You know, you anyone know? would do that, including Elizabeth Warren, apparently. Yes, exactly. Clearly. <laughs> no question about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all it's all pretty ridiculous. So Jerry's in, in prison. Hey, are you running yep. for office again, Sue? I... I know it's wicked difficult. People really want me to. I, it's uh, and and I and I want to, I would, and I may, but um, it's very everything's so up in the air right now. It's very difficult for me. I've got to. I really need to get. I still have some things that have to be done. Physical things that have to be done to an apartment that I have. Yeah. Painting. Just you know, actual finding time. Getting people to sit with my mother. And help me oh, out. Oh, by the so way, my I wife volunteered to help you. Did she? She's she's a teacher, so this in a month or so she'll be free. So. Well, if she doesn't mind traveling to Rochester, because mom doesn't even go out hardly any anymore. I have to, it's very it's a big production getting her out in the car. She has to be put in a wheelchair to really go anywhere because she can't really walk very far anymore. And it's uh it's you know get it's a terrible horrible disease. And oh, it, it is. Just it continues is. Continues to to get worse and she continues to decline and and uh but you know god love her and she's you know it just is what it is it but is, this yeah. is this yeah. situation is now very difficult for me very very yeah. difficult yeah. if it weren't for jack and and the others who are helping me and coming alongside me people like your wife who are willing to help me out when i need it i don't even know how i would get through any of this i just don't know well, I haven't talked to Sue about this, but for what it's worth, I was going to, but for, I'll do it now on television. But I think, personally, I, because you are a go-getter. You are somebody that if you are on a mission, <laughs> nothing is going to stop you. I think your mission needs to be to get Jerry out 100%. And as much as I think you're a great legislator, and you know I believe in you completely, I think you need, and also, you can, you can do so much if you're not uh, uh, tying up a lot of your time there and mom too. I think, I think if, you, if your mission becomes 100% focused on Jerry and your mom, that it'll, it will actually be a, a, a better option for you because you are such a tyrant. Sorry. You, I mean, you're going after stuff. In a, good way. Way. in a good way. In a good way. I mean, I mean you but are. But, Jack, what can I do? What can I do for Jerry? Well, you know, it hit me today when we were talking. I was to tell you yesterday, we were talking about why he maybe got moved, and, and I think you're right, is that people, you were calling him up, you were giving him what's for. I did. You I, were, called I, the, you, I, called, I called the mayor's <laughs> office, <laughs> then the I'm mayor's office about, yeah. routed me to um, the police department, then the police department routed me to the sheriff. Then I spoke to the sheriff's office, and they weren't satisfying me, so I went to Jerry's <laughs> lawyer, and I called him, her, well, him up, but point. then yeah, that yeah. woman went, and I said, well, you need to talk to the U.S. Marshal, because I was told by... Uh, Michelle Fiore, who's an assemblywoman out in Nevada, that it was the U.S. Marshal who was in charge of the prisoners and what was going on in the prison and that they had the say. So I had the lawyer's office check to see if that was true, and it wasn't. So I found out that the t detention center actually, I needed to get the U.S. Marshal, and I called the U.S. Marshal here in New Hampshire as well. He told me I needed to call the captain, the lieutenant, and the sergeant in the prison. And I was just about to start to do that. And I, I was actually, you know, that was my next thing to do. And then Jerry was that moved. moved. But I think that if you're doing that and others are doing that and you keep that pressure on and you keep it going, if nothing else. But I can do that and go and legislate well, as well. Well, it's your call. I'm just saying that's kind of just my feeling. I don't know. You we'll know. see. God love you. Anyway, we get, uh, it's, is it time? Yeah, it's time. Uh, Sue, um, we need you to keep coming, and Jack too. Come back on the show periodically, and well, you and fill I'll us let in. you set the schedule. Well, no, anytime because you know I just I'll, I, I agree. You can't let this. You can't let this. Uh, yeah. Let let it uh, rest. You gotta you c keep at it and don't be afraid to poke him in the ribs to remind him. Oh, oh yeah! Oh, oh thanks. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I, I meant I meant uh, metaphorically. Right, right. 
I, yeah, don't poke me on Facebook right now, please, <laughs> please, you know. I really, I was hoping we had more time because I wanted to share you to share that story about when you broke your ribs because that's wicked I funny. I told Sue yesterday. Oh, that's wicked funny. But oh, we'll that is so that funny. Next time. <laughs> hey, folks, thank you very much. Uh, next week we got uh, Senator Clegg coming on Oh. because people may Bob not Clegg? know it, but if you uh, buy or if you go and get medical marijuana – you have relinquished your Second Amendment rights. We'll see you next week. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Back to